Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Shivali and you're watching Swiftly Shivali. And today we're going to be talking about my journey into software engineering and coding. A few of you um, requested this video in the comments below and I thought I would just take some time to share how I became a software engineer in Silicon Valley and just kind of my path. It's really just one um, out of many paths that you can take in order to become a software engineer and my path actually started in college so I'd actually never written code before that um, nothing in high school even though my high school did offer AP computer science I just didn't really know if it would be for me I never even considered taking that course um, until I got to college and I'd, I went to college at UC San Diego, and I had entered as a uh, cognitive science major, also combined with pre-med. I didn't really know um, what I wanted to do. I thought maybe the pre-med route would be my calling, and I always thought I wanted to be a doctor, a pediatrician, but then I enrolled in my first few courses, and I realized that chemistry is just not for me. It was my freshman year, and I took and I signed up for like an 8 a.m. chemistry class, and I realized I was just not enjoying those courses. I wasn't doing well in them either, and so I realized I it was time for me to change my major, try something different. Uh, a lot of my friends were actually in business and like econ majors. So I was like, let me try this. Uh, economics is interesting to me. I Maybe I, this is something that I could do. And so I uh, signed up for some econ classes and I was doing okay in those, but I wasn't sure like what kind of job I wanted to do after college. So that was something that was very like daunting for me that I, I wasn't sure if there would be job security and I also didn't know what kind of job I would like to do afterwards. So again, I was in a state of like confusion and I was talking to my parents about this and my dad, who is actually in the tech field, he encouraged me to try a computer science class. And at that point, I didn't really know anything about computer science. I had like this preconceived notion that it was only for people who liked robotics or um, just it was like incredibly nerdy like none of my friends were doing it and I thought that maybe I wouldn't fit in. I, I honestly just didn't know. It was kind of like a black box for me. After a lot of encouragement from my dad he was like just try just go ahead and just try a class. I signed up for an intro to Java course and when I signed up, I had no idea what to expect, but I ended up doing really well. So I was like, I think one of the top like one to two students in that course. And I like completely aced it. It was, I realized like, hey, I'm actually really good at this. Um, all of the, the logics involved and the, I guess part of the creativity that is involved in coding is something that really drew me to the major. And so I went to my career counselor and I decided to switch my major for the third time. And so this time it was computer science. And as the courses progressed, as I started going into the upper division courses, uh, I realized that computer science is pretty challenging. It was really hard for me. And so I would I was struggling with some of the, the concepts that they would teach um, in my like upper division data structures and algorithm courses and so I realized that along with school and along with grades which for me were were low I needed to have some real wor world experience and so I tried to apply for internships uh, the internship that I got was of a quality assurance um, tester. Tester. I can't even say test engineer because uh, I didn't write any code during that internship, but it was a great experience altogether. We um, tested uh, the mobile apps for the NFL network. It was a company that um, NFL had outsourced, and so I I was a part of that company and I would test the mobile apps. And so 
it was um, such a great experience because I got to learn about the software engineering life cycle, what it's like to work on a team that collaborates with engineers, test engineers, product people, designers, etc. And my job was to file any bugs, anything that was that I felt like was an issue that didn't uh, align with the requirements of the code. Um, but I was not writing any scripts. I wasn't writing any test code. I wasn't writing any of the codes for the apps. But this was a summer internship and I was so super grateful for it because um, when I came back to school in the fall, uh, my summer internship experience actually landed me in on-campus job as a quality assurance engineer and at this point that job required writing code and that interview process was interesting because the job required um, me to code in Visual Basic and I had no idea about Visual Basic but I convinced the interviewers that I can learn it on the job and with my summer internship experience I knew uh, the core concepts of quality assurance. Uh, um, I knew concepts such as like regression testing, how to file bugs, how to document requirements, um, how to test in a manual way, and as well as what should be automated and what shouldn't be. Just core concepts that I wouldn't have known otherwise during my CS curriculum. So I think that really set me apart. And this quality assurance engineering job was great for me because I got to, one, I got interv great interviewing experience, um, two, I got to learn with like a different set of people, I learned, I think with every job you just learn so much more. And so now I had two good technical jobs on my resume, both of them were like low level internship type of positions, and then I went on to job fairs and so I'd hand out my resumes to all of these companies and wasn't getting anything back that I wanted and so what um, I'd hand in my resume for a software engineer position and the recruiter would come back and say oh your resume looks great I think you would be great on our quality assurance team I think you would become a great test engineer and at that point I, that's not the field that I wanted to go into because during my um, QA internship with NFL Networks, I realized that I really like client-driven technology, something that a person can use and touch and feel and actually make an impact in somebody's life. So I wanted to be the software engineer that created, that actually created the products. And even though being part of the QA team was very like, gratifying because I was part of the team that delivered uh, an application to millions of users, I, I wanted to be the person who was writing that code and delivering the product as opposed to being somebody who just assisted them in doing that. And I found that to be immensely gratifying and it was just really cool to see somebody using the technology that you create and I think that's also part of the reason why I am starting YouTube now and trying to you know create content um, digital content for other people to consume and enjoy and I think that's just something that brings me a lot of joy personally so then after getting rejected a bunch of times at career fairs and I could have gone the test engineering route. That's an amazing career path because you are an essential portion of the software development life cycle. And the code you write, you do have end users as well. Those would just be the people internal to your company. And so it was just like a different way of thinking. And I just wanted to be in a consumer facing role. I wanted my code to go out into production. So then I started to apply for software development positions at other companies and I realized that I had to do something different. So I reached out to the company that I had QA'd with previously and I was hoping they could give me some kind of developer um, position but even, even they were just like, you need some experience in software development. I didn't know where to get that from. I had experience in my uh, CS classes which were 
uh, Java based, C++ based, but I didn't know how to apply that into industry. So I, I really had to do some research and I took a Stanford based course in iOS development and that course is great. I highly recommend it. It is um, still available online and it's actually available on YouTube now. And every year they update the course. And when I took it, it I was only available, I think on iTunes. I basically built a very basic calculator and I believe a Twitter feed, something like that. And that's where I learned um, Swift. I learned about Xcode and it was very basic, but I was exposed to those technologies and I could apply my CS knowledge to something that was practical and something that uh, people were hiring for in industry. And I'll link it below. There's actually some controversy, I guess, now because this year that same course is offered in Swift UI and not Swift. And so I think people are um, wondering why they made that move. And so there's there's like some people have posted a bunch of articles based on that, but I would still encourage you to check it out even though it's in Swift UI. And maybe you can find an older version, maybe last year's course um, that it is probably taught in Swift. And so coming off of that, I went back to the company that I had QA'd with and I said, hey, I've taken this course. I know some stuff. Can you please hire me? Um, as an intern and that was a great experience for me because I learned so much about software development and building an app really from the ground up and um, that project actually got dragged on for way longer than it was supposed to be I guess uh, it, I think initially it was contracted out for maybe like six to nine months and I was just starting out as an intern I thought I would you know be going back to school after my internship ended and the project got extended and extended and extended um, about over a year and so I had to make a decision if I wanted to stay on that project or go back to school or have some kind of compromise and work maybe part-time at school and then part-time um, as an iOS developer and I actually made the tough decision to take a year off from school to continue working on this project. And so I worked on this project for a long time, but as I think it was like about a year in, we realized that the startup company didn't have enough funding. So we were, our app was pretty much not gonna, going to be released. They were just, they were only going to release the web app portion. And so all of this work that I had done I, there was no like end product. The app never got launched into the app store. And so as you can imagine, that was incredibly um, sad, and, but I'd gained so much knowledge. And so I'd only had a couple more quarters left at UCSD. So I decided to go back to school and finish up my degree. I only had a few quarters left. And then I realized that I really missed working in industry. So I went to another career fair, but this time my resume was padded with over a year of iOS development experience and I was getting calls back way faster. It was a completely different experience as when I had went before I had something on my resume. There was a company based in San Diego and I approached the, uh, the head of engineering there and I asked him like, oh, can you please create a part-time position for me I would really like to help out and that job was also amazing because I was one of two developers on the application and I learned so much about uh, reactive programming and that application was actually written using RX Swift which um, I think crucial now if you're joining one of the companies, especially since Apple has come out with their combined framework. And so then fast forward a couple of months later, I graduated from UCSD. I was offered a full-time position at the company in San Diego. Um, and I was really excited about that role, but I realized that I wanted to moved to San Francisco in the Bay Area. I realized that I felt like that's where all of like the really cool tech jobs are, the bigger companies, and I wanted to find a company that was a mobile first company because of my passion for iOS development and really client-side technologies. And so 
I started applying and just really through my network that we, I was able to apply for a position at Life360, that's where I currently work. And they are a mobile first company. You know, the website, the web app comes secondary. It's really the iOS and Android apps that are their core product. Um, I went through that interview process. I got the position and I moved up and it's been about two years since I've been working for them and learning um, so much every day. I really like making an impact in people's lives through the code I write and hopefully now through the videos that I create. Um, I just wanted to do something more during this whole COVID-19 pandemic. I know that so many more people are shifting towards technical careers and if there's anything that I can do to assist, um, I want to create content in order to help with that. And that really sums up my software engineering journey so far. Um, I'm still on this journey. I'm still moving forward in my career, but I'd like to share all the knowledge that I have gained so far with all of you. So if you would like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really motivates me to make more videos for you guys. Um, additionally, leave any comments in the comment section below. I always make sure to read them and I try my best to res respond to every single one. So give this video a thumbs up and follow me on my Instagram too. Um, I would really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.